March 24th. locked up for 14 days no justice March 31st 2019 Colonel Johnson was shot dead somewhere at the viewing center and right now somewhere in this country there's a heart beating at a gunpoint there's an index finger ready to open fire there's a mother dancing to a dirge she just keeps skips skips and still ends up with the same song made by disc jockeys who know how well to play mixed fillets at the funeral party gone are those days when our streets are decked with burning desires now they are littered with burning bodies fading into ash tags ak-47 looks like a special number rendered by a boy who just escaped death from people that are supposed to protect him we have only dead walking boys left there are no right here no dark horses only nightmares bad news same station with the only cast here man down boy down blood on the streets still the media give us no bullet points like empty magazines and you claim to take the bulls by the horn you call both story we all know we scratch that i know that you have the spirit in your gene we just give up the ghosts you burn down the jungle and expect the trees to stick with you what do you shoot to kill what do you apprehend at will interrogating our existence what do you question in vain there are bleeding boys in your custody you keep red blood cells we look at our future with eyes semi-closed like a pack of stoned faces, color Stevens. We are martyrs in our own country. We know the exchange rate of death on the black market. We know how to buy silence with sirens, our hair caught in the moment. We are right, yes, with dreadlocks. You tell us to have visions, then you judge us by our looks. Tell us to go up for owning laptops. We are tired of running for of using the same. Hashtag like the case of an unanswered yes. Of a way in this. Hey. Hello. Hi, sorry. Hello, are you there? Okay. Sorry, I lost some people because of the internet. But welcome to the Aquia TV marking of the Africa Languages Week edition of it. So we are going to have um, challenges. It's been declared by the African Union that we should have an African Languages Week in commemoration of the pivotal role that um, languages will play in the development of Africa. You know of the Africa Vision 2063, I guess. Uh, not many Africans know about it, but a lot of Africans are beginning to become aware of the uh, Africa Languages Week, and we should, you know, well, Africans should take charge of the continent themselves, and so we don't have to wait for our governments to do whatever we want them to do for, for us. So this is why even we at Aquia TV, we're not waiting for 
the government to celebrate, to mark the African Languages Week before we take it on. We know languages are important. Admit that this pivotal role of languages must be marked. In 2063, Africa has lofty visions that it expects to have materialized by that year. A lot should have happened, particularly Africa expects that the continent would have silenced the guns, which means there'll be no more wars in Africa and Africans will be living in, in peace. Please, when you join, uh, try and mute your mics. I'm going to try and ensure that we mute our mic. Francis, you're welcome. Hello, Francis. Well, Hello. you're welcome. Good afternoon. Yeah, how's the sun? Oh, bless God. It's fine. Hello? I can hear you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, good afternoon. Where are you yes, reaching us from? From a uh, those states. Hello, Francis. Hello, Francis. Yes, hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm sorry we are having yes, network sir. challenges. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. So you, you, you're joining us from Edo State? Yes, from Edo State. How is uh is it in Benin? Are you in Benin? Uh yes, I'm in Benin presently. Okay. So how do we greet you in your language? What language do you speak? I speak uh Isako. Okwela. Isako. Okay. Mm, Okwela in particular. Oh, Okwela. Okay. Yes. Is there a difference in the languages? Uh yes, very well. Okay. So how do you say good afternoon? Amu. Amu. 
Okay. Uh, he, he'll say, I'm okay. And how does one respond to that? Huawei. Yeah? Huawei. Huawei. Okay. I'm Huawei. Okay. Yes. So who says it first? So if you meet me, I will tell you I'm more. I'm more. So you will now respond to me. Huawei. Huawei. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. And how do oh, you say feel, if I'm a visitor, you are still yes. for the first time. When we carry you, we carry you. Okay, <laughs> great. So um, now you will be our first winner for okay uh, day. Uh, we're going to send you a 500 naira recharge card to whatever network oh. you want. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Today is the final day of the Africa Languages Week, and oh. we, will, we should reward everyone for speaking their mother tongue. Uh, that is nice. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I would like you to. Okay, sir. I would like you to send us um, a WhatsApp on our official line. Okay. So that it allows us, it allows us to, to to send um, the, the recharge card. Okay, so the official line is okay. Zero nine zero. Okay, sir. Four 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 four. Eight hundred. 800 200 200 800 200 yes so okay. uh, do you have children no 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 i'm single you're single yes okay but but i'm sure how do you, how do you communicate with your younger ones you I will speak language in... We speak language direct. Ah, we speak language. Yes, yeah, okay. so very well. My dad is a teacher. So he okay. doesn't speak English with us. He speaks oh. language. So we're brought up in speaking language. Great, great, great. So although we okay. do go, go outside to so go if, if we go say Hello. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Yes. Okay, I can hear you, sir. Yeah, you say you, you do go outside to go and uh, I, well, I yeah. say well, we, you, say you we, go outside we, to go and school. Uh, and as well, when we school outside, you know, they will still come back to the village and we speak language. Okay. Uh, so it's really yes. when we are out, out of the village, we have opportunity of speaking English with friends. Okay. Oh, that's mm. great. That's great. So, if you were to say uh, there is going to be election next year, mm. how do you say it in Esako? Oh, when no yara is when yara is okay. Is okay? I am when na is okay. Okay. Oh, uh, so issue is what? Issue is next year. Okay. Oh, that's great. That's, that's great. Issue is next year. Um, um, so is this year. Is it easy to pass messages? Hello? Okay. okay. Hello, is that what you were asking? Is it easy to pass messages in your language? I say, are there many like, people that speak? Are there many people? Are there many people that speak? Yes, oh, yeah. yeah, in my entire community, we speak, we speak my language. Okay. I say, are there many people that speak? Yes, okay. uh, yes, yes, now, yes. 
Okay. 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 All right. All right. All right. Um, um, you know, um, you know, you know. Somebody just joined us, and somebody the audio is giving a feedback. Giving a feedback. Okay. So, do they con conduct so, official business so, in your language? Official business in your language. Yes. Like people, like if you sell something now, sell does somebody give you a receipt, receipt in your language? Okay, no, 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 no. We are not. We don't. We don't do like that. Okay, but at least, but at least if you go to, you go to a place of worship. Yes. Does the preacher speak in Esako? If if the person understands Esako, he speaks Esako. If it's an outside uh, preacher, then we have interpreter. Yes. If it's an outside preacher, okay. we have somebody that interprets. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, um, the, but what of the young children? Do you do they speak to them? Yes, they are, that is is our major language. They speak in the village, so we are not used to that to English like that. Okay. Okay. Mm. But those those in the city, what happens? What happens? Yeah, I don't. I I I can't say more about this because some of them the challenge that is there is that if. Like some of my causes, they marry mm. uh, women from another uh, state mm. who does not understand our language. So is that we of the wife or the husband communicating with English? Uh -huh. So some once they they give birth because of mm. the communication of the man and the wife, they will make continue English. So some of the wives that I joined with coming to the village, like my brother, my dad's brother's wife now, he did yes. visit us together. And he do understand little bit of our village, uh, our language. He do at times, he's trying to speak. He, sometimes if you speak, he understand. Uh -huh. So mm. my brother's prayer will use language to communicate with them. Okay, before we continue, let me welcome Buhari okay. Abba Rano. Buhari, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, Buhari, what language do you speak? What's your mother tongue? My mother tongue is Hausa language. It's Hausa, okay. Yes. Uh, so, how do you say welcome? Sanada Zua. Sanada Zua. Yes, sir. Okay. That's great. That's great. Yes. Um, we have Francis on the line, but Francis is from uh, Esako in... Uh, Edo State. Okay. And he just told us about his own language and how they say welcome. Okay. Yes. Um, Buhari, if you are going to say in your language, come, let's go and learn a new language. Okay. Hello? Yes. Yes. Okay. In my language, when I say come and learn new language. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Come. 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 Yes. Learn is koyo. Learn is koyo. Okay. New uh, Sabo. Sabo, okay. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. So, do you have children? Yes, yes. Do you teach your children uh, how to speak your language? Yes. Okay. So, you feel that. They are, they are going to carry on teaching the language or learning the language and speaking in the language? 
Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, Buhari seems to have been locked out. Anyway, he will join us shortly. Uh, Francis, uh, Francis. Yes, sir. You bear an English name or a Christian name. Why don't you have an Esaco name? I have. I I needed the the one that it will be easy for you to pronounce now. I have a second name. No, no. We, we we have people from other places. They don't give us easier names. Okay. The white man probably gives us his name. Okay. I have, yeah. I have a second name. Oh. My uh -huh. first name is a name. My first name is a name. Okay. Okay. Should I? Should I call it for you? Yes. Afigbo Deme. Afigbo. Afigbo Deme. Afigbo Deme. Yes. Ah, it's very easy. Very easy. Okay. Yes. Please, Some proudly tell money. us you are Afigbo Deme. Okay, I'm Afigbo Deme. Okay. And what's the surname? Uduafi. 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 U D U D F I. Uduafi. Okay. 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 What does Apigbo Demen mean? My destiny cannot be stopped. Whoa, and that's a beautiful name. Yes. My destiny cannot be stopped. You know, we have to be proud of our names and our cultures. Sure. Um, because like we say, when you bring the Chinese here, they construct all our roads, they do everything, but they can't speak one word of English. So they learn proudly in their languages. They give us their names in any way they want, and we learn to live with the names. So, so Nigerians should, Nigerians should not feel that feel our names are inferior. inferior. Right? Yes. Okay. okay. Francis, do you have a song in Esako that you can share with us? Song? A song? A song. Yes, so. Okay, okay. please give us one. Give us one. Eshina Bumati, Lali Miaga, Ori Jesu Bale, Omosolina, Eshina Bumati, Lali Miaga, Ori Jesu Bale, Omosolina. Okay. okay. Yes. That's a great one. What does that mean? God was so merciful. That he said his son and he died for us and saved us. Okay. And she not by his God. All right. He, uh, yeah. yeah. So he Jesus is Jesus. In my language, we call it Jesus. Okay. And uh, why well, she not by his God? And she not go Marty. Or Marty, that means was so good. Hmm. Hmm. So, Umati, ah, you tell somebody Umati, that means I say the person is very good. Right. Thank you so much. Do you, there's a, there's a thing that kills languages. And one of it is that when we don't teach the next generation, the language dies. Yes. Are you there with me, Francis? Yes, I'm with you, sir. In the villages, are they teaching the Esako language? Uh, yes. Uh, when I was in primary two, yeah, I know I was taught. I was taught. I I actually learn how to read in English with my language. Okay. okay. Yeah, because 
I, I was uh, when I was attending um my dialect classes, we were taught uh, R B D A F B. So with A B C, that was why I was the application of reading in my language was what I applied before I know how to read in English. Oh, oh. yes. So uh, learning from my uh, uh, what do you call it? My learning my language was actually what put me through. Because most of the pronunciation yes. are like a bit similar to the way you pronounce your normal A, B, and uh -huh. So that won't mm -hmm. give me an edge to easily read. Oh. Oh. Interesting. And so, so you can say the whole letters of the alphabet is a a letter of the alphabet. I cannot say all oh, no. the. It's only one, two, three. I know. I read very well now. <laughs> can you try? Can you try? Okay, the alphabet, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. In our own, our, okay. A, B, D, E, A, F, G, G, O. That's how I can stop. But if I see, if I see my book, <laughs> if I see, if no, I see my really book. Good. No, but, but if I see my book, I can read. Yes. Yeah. If I see my book, I will see my book, I can read. But, but if I, if you know why I open my book, sir. <laughs> uh, look, that's really good. Thank you, sir. That's really good. In my language, my language is also called okay. Aquea. And we we are still trying to standardize our letters of the alphabet. And it says A and it says A B B D E A F G Finish that. It's about it's forty. Like a, 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 a bit, a bit similar. Yes. <laughs> Some of your letter are a bit similar. Yeah, I remember yes. we are so we easy. <laughs> That's that <laughs> one. We easy. So it okay. Like that that we was so sort of interesting us. How do you we easy? I. <laughs> uh, uh, my father used to teach father us. Teach us. Uh, oh, he was also a teacher. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we tried a lot to, you know, our our language has some difficult sounds. Yes. Like uh, when I say a word like "okwiki." Oh, Okay. Kwi. Okay. That sound, okwikwi. It's okwikwi means a chief or a king. Okay. Uh, so we have been struggling with the best way to represent that kwi, which. Some people say it should be K W Y. Okay. Some want to represent it with the letter Q. And some 
and so there's no resolution yet about okay. how to represent it. Okay. Okay. And then a house is called Ikwi. Oh. Owa. Owa. What do you call a house in Owa? Owa. 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 Okay. What do you call school? Oh, when I that is when I mean learning place. Okay, mm. it seems similar to most of the languages. Let me welcome Wale Ogunyale. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, sirs and mouse. Good afternoon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Wale, you're welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Well, I see all the accents on your name. Yes, sir. Is this how you write it? Even yes, that's right. normally? Yes, that's how I write my name, except in former, maybe in school and other former official purposes. Okay. Oh, great. So what language is your mother tongue? Yoruba. Yoruba, okay. And um, is there a particular dialect of Yoruba that you speak? Yes, Onko. I speak Onko and um, the general dialect as well. Okay, Onko is, is from where? It's from where? Hello, Wale. Hello, Wale. Oh, spoken in the um, your state. Oyo? Oyo? Oyo state, yes. Oh, great. Oh, great. Is, is there a specific area of Oyo where... Yes, it's... That's Okyogun. Near the Koda area, Okyogun area in Oyo state. That is southwestern Oyo state. Then um, okay. it's close to it, but one of the major differences between um, Onko and the general Yoruba is the presence of chi in this particular dialect, unlike the general Yoruba that doesn't have that. So the presence of what? Chi sound, the sound chi, like the chi oh. in church. Okay. okay. Yes. So in what words would, would we find that? So in most cases, in places where the general Yoruba will use sh, something like sh, yes. that is when they will use that chi. So for instance, ishe in Yoruba means work. So in no yes. going to be ishe. Ah. Exactly, sir. Okay. Interesting. Where, where does this difference originate from? Are you people going to say you are the first set of uh, yes, a number of a number of um Onko speakers believe that um the Onko people actually migrated from these um towards the northern part. So as a result of that, they were some people even believe that they were the set the first set of people to migrate to to the Yoruba land, the present Yoruba land. So that is why they stick majority of the initial sounds that were present in the um, a kind of archetypal Yoruba, the prototype Yoruba of the olden days. Okay. 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 Wow. So, wow. So, I, I always, I always I, I agree with this argument with this because argument. often, often um, uh, those who, I mean, languages don't uh, metamorphose to become more difficult. Mm. They always try to lose some of the initial essence of the language. Yeah, exactly. So if, whenever I see a language that has more complicated, more complicated um, systems, it, it seems to me that they are more likely to be the uh, older languages. Exactly, that's, that's true. Because a lot of 
a lot of rules that you get in general Yoruba, you get to see that yes. those rules are in court now violated in the Onko dialect. So for instance, oh. general Yoruba, they will tell you that um, the general Yoruba does not start with, um, this, um, we don't have N in Yoruba, that is the Neza N. But yes. in Onko, yes. so for instance, the Onko, instead of saying something like Osong, Mm. You know, mm. our hands with on sound. So they use the N sound, they'll say O Okay. Okay. Yeah. So but in general Yoruba, that is not possible because they it's even some of these ways they'll tell you it is not applicable in general Yoruba, but you go further into this particular onko onko side, you get to see the way they speak that dialect. It's kind of mm. breaks the majority of the rules that you have in the phonology of general Yoruba, even grammar as well. Okay. Okay. I I was speaking, I was speaking with uh, Francis, yeah, Francis. Francis on the call Francis here. Call, yeah. um, um, he is uh, from Esako, and he says in the village they they sing in Esako and all of that. Are there things happening in the village that keeps the language alive? like that yes a lot i come the um when you go for the most of these places except for shaki and ishen those are the places you can call metropolitan when it comes to onko area apart from mm. those, those two big cities i mean they can just call them big towns the other places yeah. are more of rural and they still maintain yeah. some of the cultural practices. So, for instance, festivals, you have these um, Egugu yeah. festivals. You have, um, in fact, there is one Onko town that believes that that is where the Egungu of the Yoruba originates from. They call that town Oje. And Oje in Yoruba actually means um, it was the rename of the first person who had Egungu. So, they believe that the man came from that town. Wow. Wow. Okay. So anytime they want to do this a Google festival, it is done in that lang in the dialect. Most of the majority of the things they do, except when it is formal, when people come from other parts of the states or maybe other parts of Yoruba land, that is when they might switch to the general Yoruba that we, we use. Okay. okay. Can you say Can you something, say something in, in uh, the, language, the language in such a way that someone who speaks the regular Yoruba will not understand. Um, the person might, might understand it, but he might not be able to say it. So, for instance, if I want to greet you now, say, I can't say, oh. okay, okay, say, send law, okay, okay, instead of a castle, instead of a castle, yes, okay, okay. Oh, interesting. oh, interesting. So, the, in in writing, is there any difference? Like when yeah, you are writing yeah. this? Okay, actually, there's um, there is. I'm actually working on the on the writing system because nobody people don't actually pay attention to this dialect. But they just believe that um, since it is part of all your or the or your people speak the same dialect. So, mm. but in writing, you wouldn't even in um in some of these Yoruba novels that you have seen, maybe some maybe a speaker, somebody mm. portrays a speaker from this side, they will still use the same she for that person when the mm. person is speaking. It's only in films that you get to see the difference that this person is saying she instead of saying she. And in most cases, when they want to portray an uncle speaker in films, they portray them as clowns because <laughs> of the <laughs> exactly. Oh. Because of the dialect, a lot of people think that the dialect is kind of um, um, redundant and you know humorous to the hear. I've seen a lot of people who say anytime they hear that dialect, they feel like laughing. Like, is this mm. a particular dialect in Yoruba or is this slang? I'll tell them it's mm. not slang. It's something that people are brought up with. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, um, we we. We so, so you say you are working on the writing system. Yes, actually, I'm trying to document the right one day some of the practices in the area because okay. it's still one of the places where you can. And so, that's what I'm 
doing for now. At least it's my it's my dissertation, but I'm not I've not gone I'm still in Uyo right now. I'm studying I'm a student at um, University of Uyo. Okay. 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 That's great. So, um, Are you aware of the so go this African Languages Week declared by the African yeah. Union? Yes, sir. It was um my supervisor, that's Professor Ura, that actually posted it on our page. So that okay. was where I got to know about it. Okay. Okay. So they they they, they, they have a, a website called African Languages dot org so just in case you want to check out the the site the site i would do, i would do that okay we just felt that at aquaria tv we promote languages culture art and development and we we just felt that we should contribute our own uh, in marking the week and creating awareness about it. Exactly, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, so please, please, we have a, a, just a small prize for joining us. Uh, it's 500 Naira recharge card. If if you well, thank can you send much. us a, a, WhatsApp a WhatsApp on our line, it's uh, 090 Yes. Yes. But please stay on the line. There's Pius Joe. Hello, Pius Joe. Pius has been following us from our Facebook page. Hello, Pius Joe. All right, Pius is not answering. Francis, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Francis, what should we do for the younger generation to take pride in speaking their languages? The work should be done by their parents. Okay. Okay. It's because majorly it's their parents that will encourage that. Because okay. I remember when my uncle had the bread, and the, their mother doesn't understand the language. Yeah. He was scared to come and spend time with my grandmother. And when they're in the village, you, you then not speak English with them. You have to speak the language. So maybe my uncle saw you doing that, you'll be angry. That, that is even the major thing of using that style to ask them to come and spend time in the village so that they can be able to the language. And play with, because, uh, you know, children playing together and you hear your mate speaking. Hmm. Before you you be able to adapt, that is to me that is the easiest way of even learning the language, hmm. uh, and even sitting down in the class and they are teaching you. Once you are with people that speak the language, every time you listen and you do ask questions, it's easy for you to learn. Yeah, yeah. So if our parents will be able to still be uh, sending us uh, uh, the children back to the village. To spend some time so that you know where you are from, you know the culture mm. of your people. And you see that at times you, you get to meet some people, they will tell you that my father always, always told me that I'm from that place. They don't even know the place. Mm. So some people, it's difficult for them to learn. Uh, like in Benin, yeah, Benin has their own language that they speak. Yeah. So yeah. me now, before you now be telling me to go and be learning Benin now, it might be difficult. But actually, if I have grown up in Benin, live in, in, in an environment where I really live with that speak Benin, uh, understand Benin. But though I grew up in the village, so that's why everything in my village I understand them. So our parents should always try and encourage us to go back to where we come from, so that we we'll know that is the only way I will forget that we can learn the language faster. Okay. Okay. And because actually, uh, I use what I, I know I speak with my friends, with my dad, with my brothers, 
not what I learned, though the way they were teaching uh, local uh, dialects is not what I learned, I speak, it's what I've already known. So, and the local dialect was not just like a walkover for me, not as difficult as that. Yeah. And so, our parents will encourage the, uh, the younger ones to like at times go back to the village and spend some time. Then you come back if you are coming back with it. Because if if you want to teach uh, my language, there, will, uh, there is no school in Benin here that teach my language. It's only within my community, my geographic oh. area where my language is taught. So even though you're still less teach, that means my person, though uh, uh, he has now learned Benin, not a Because me now, I don't know how to speak Benin. I don't really understand Benin very well, but I speak my language very well. If I speak Benin, the person doesn't really understand. So that's oh. it. Okay. Sorry, Wale. Uh, Wale. Yes. Sir. Is, is there a role for the government? Exactly. There are, there are many roles that the government can play. I think in this case, one of them is trying to make sure that minority languages also have... Um, a place in, in the um, official communication that is communication coming from the government. One thing I discovered is majority of the people, my mom, my mom that comes from this uncle speaking side, majority of the things that are happening in Badom, they don't know. It gets to them maybe two weeks after, or maybe somebody who goes to Ibadan, which is the capital of your state, then maybe the person goes back. That would be the person that would tell them, okay, the government has declared a particular day as holiday or today there is mm. nothing because they don't, they don't have any connection to the city. And the public holiday would have passed before they had... Exactly, before they even get to know. Uh, there was a time <laughs> I went there for... It was so funny that day I went there to see my mom and I got to see, I think that it was a public holiday. I can't remember the holiday. So I saw students already going to school and I was telling my mom that this student will be sent back when they go to school. And she was like, what happened? I said, today happens to be a public holiday. So they didn't know that they didn't. And she, she too, she sells food in a, in a school. Wow. That they never told them that there was going to be a holiday today, that day. So it was maybe wow. after 12, some of those students back home. Hmm. If the government could just make, make use of the dialect of the minority people in communicating to them, I think that is, that's one way. Then maybe by mm. setting up a radio station near near those people, at least by the time they are using the dialect to communicate with those people, they'll be able to understand what is actually going on. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even something like dedicating even half an hour to each language for translations. Mm -hmm. That's true, sir. Yes. Yeah. So on radio. You can have, instead of maybe establishing brand new radio stations everywhere, you could say, okay, 30 minutes for this language, 30 minutes for another one. Exactly. Yeah. Then the role, the government should also kind of try to control the role. Like I said earlier, this onco, a lot of people think it's, um, it's one kind of dialect that is, you know, outside this Yoruba land. Um, some people will laugh at you when you speak it. So even mm -hmm. on radio, like in the Badon, anytime I go to that place and there's this Saturday program that they do for parties. Mm -hmm. So yes. the only thing they use it for on that particular radio station is to, you know, make jokes, crack jokes, because mm -hmm. it's this it as a kind of funny, dialect yeah. so i think that is also changing the mentality of people that anytime they see a person speaking it, they think that person is a jester oh i think dr wale okedira is from there right yes and um this um prof professor dipo jerry there as well oh oh it, interesting it's from Igbo. ah interesting Interesting. Um, so how are you leveraging working with these people to increase awareness about the Oko language or dialect, if you 
Uh, yes. Um, one thing I, the last time I went home, one thing I did was there was a particular school I was teaching. It's a public school, so they didn't have, they didn't have teachers, enough teachers. So I was renting some services to them. And from there, I was trying to just encourage those people, the students, to be speaking the, the, the dialect. Because, you know, mm. even in school, sometimes they beat them. But there is this policy in you know, your state that um, I think Wednesdays, Wednesday is for native languages. So even on Wednesdays, the teachers will be telling them that um, you that cannot even speak English, how would you even be speaking Yoruba all through the day on, on a Wednesday? So that Wednesday, they'll make sure that they don't speak Yoruba. So it was that time I had to appeal to them and say, these people, there's a reason why they have dedicated a Wednesday to this mm. dialect. So let them be speaking it. If it is English, some of them might come to speak the, la the language maybe pretty better than they are right now when they get out of school or, or perhaps mm. when they listen to radio, television and other stuff, they might still catch up with that language. But if they should mm. lose this the particular mother tongue, they might not be able to regain it anymore. Okay. okay. So oh, you're welcome. You. Thank you, sir. Paul Liam is here uh, Sunday. Ezema Namdi. Pastor Ezema, you're welcome. Pastor Ezema, Sunday. Could you unmute? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Happy Sunday. Happy to be here on this platform. Same to you, everyone. Okay. okay. What's, your What's your first language, your mother tongue? Uh, uh, Igbo. Okay. Is it Igbo or Igbo? <laughs> Igbo. Igbo. I-G-B-U. Okay. Yeah, because I see a lot of people write I-B-O. We uh, perhaps that will be uh, a broader word. Igbo, yeah. I know, is I G B O. Do you have a, a specific dialect of Igbo that is yes, more I, I original? Am, to I am from Suka, and I will have a, a particular dialect apart from the general central dialect of Igbo. Okay. Okay, what's the difference between that one and the others? The other one is centralized. This one is for a particular person from Musoka. Okay. You can be speaking that one and anybody from other part of people now may not be hearing what you are saying. Mm. Yes. So how do you say, can you say something? that someone from another part of Igbo land will not understand. Let's hear. Wow. And what does that mean? Other people will not understand. I am very, very fine. OK. I am very, very fine. Other Igbo, would it other Igbo speak it as, uh, I am fine. Add more. Okay. Yes. That's inter that's interesting. Okay. So, what what happens? Do you write this language? Do you write in this language? We don't. We don't because it is just for a particular segment of Musuka that speak that language, and okay. it is covered as some part part of uh, Kogi and uh, Benue. This uh, Idoma side. They, yeah. they, they, they help when you speak those languages because they are close to us. Oh, yes. Meanwhile, they can, some of them can still understand the central language if you speak to them. But okay. particularly if you speak that one, they will not know the location of the Igbo you are from. Hmm. Hmm. Is, is this spoken on radio or TV? Huh? Are there people who speak this on radio and, and TV around that Nsuka area? Yes, in radio program in Enugu. Yes. yes. 
Okay. Uh, cool FM. They have it as they do it as program. Now, if you listen to Ngozi or Gaga on a uh, on a uh, Ray Power. Yes. He is from there. Probably on a Thursday Thursday program on Ray Power. Yes, Ngozi or Gaga will some most times speak that particular dialect, specific dialect that as a tribute to part of Nsuka that I'm talking about. Mm. So if on on on, on Thursday the Ngongo Gaga is on a, on the air, you would always hear people from that area call. Meanwhile, Ngozi Gaga would naturally understand the central Igbo. For that mm. particular one, if anybody calls and speak it, he would naturally understand it. And you see that some of those uh, people from Ampa in Kogi State and some yeah. from Idoma close to Enugu, because we yeah. we we'll target them, we we'll buy their pan wine, they buy our own, we we'll buy their opa, they buy our own, we we'll buy uh, we we'll have a, a lot of uh, of uh, uh, diet. Uh, what I mean now is food that we eat together that are known within us. So if you want to buy those ones, you don't speak Central Igbo because that would be a waste of time. You just go down to our own local, most uh, esoteric dialect, and they will understand what you are saying. But that was still... Wow. wow. So which when you speak with your children, which one do you speak? I speak this local one, my own, my own, the local one I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. Mm. And it was the risk, like when they mix with other people that are Igbo, that how do they communicate? The, there is no risk. Okay. Because if we speak the other one, we also interpret the other one for them. If I say Admoy, Admoy, they know what Admoy. But if you say Admoy, they will understand that I am going deeper. Perhaps they will start laughing, but they know now that that is speaking deeper language hmm. to them. Uh, like okay. Imaga, what how, is, are how are you? What, what is it about us Africans? Hello, Wale, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm here. Can you Why do we laugh at the marginalized or the marginal languages? What makes it funny? I think um, this thing is, it seems it's um, maybe, I don't know whether it, has happened, it was happening before the colonial period, but I think it should be, this should be a kind of colonial mentality. Like when the Oyibos, the white people came and you know, they were like, the languages, calling them Nakula, laughing at people who speak this language, the, the so called major language in these days. You know, at mm. that time they would laugh at them. Now, this time around, that those languages of those days that were vernacular, now that there are major languages, they're now transferring that kind of thing to the minor ones. That is one of the reasons. Two, it's because you know you hardly you hardly have economic and political powers are one of uh, are germane when it comes to the powers that a particular language can hold. Okay. Sometimes I always tell people that the fact that Ibadan and Oyo dialects were made in the general Yoruba does not mean that they were better than the other dialects. It doesn't mean mm. that Ibadan dialect is better than uh, uh, Undo. It doesn't mean that it's better than Ijebu. It's better than Onko. It's better than Eba. It is because the Oyo people had political powers in those days. Mm. And you cannot use a language or a dialect with, that you were ruling upon to be the major dialect. You're going to choose your own. The dialect that people usually use is the dialect of the powerful. Mm. So they now look at those people who are less powerful as inferior. And as a result of that, they, as they condemn their personality, they also condemn the language that they speak. So I think that is one of the major things that is happening when it comes to all this um, marginalization of languages in Africa. We look at people based on their on the location they come from and the kind of you know low power or no power that they hold when it comes to the particular set of people. Like the Onko people, they hardly <clears throat> like you said. You were talking about professors now. If you mm. count about the number of professors in Yoruba land, you get to see maybe just about four or five from that area. And you mm. can compare that to maybe places where you have about 
100 of them, of them. Then you can compare them to maybe places where you have hundreds of business people or developed areas like Ibadan, where they make the real um, decisions that will guide all other people. So I think that's one of the major reasons why those people are marginalized. So the more those people acquire power, the better their dialect is also seen, maybe. Oh, great. So now going forward, the African Union has said African languages will be the lever that will be pivotal to the Africa we want, an Africa that is technologically advanced, an Africa that is united, an Africa that there are no more wars and the guns have been silenced. How do, do you agree with this? This huge number of languages, they say it's going to be pivotal. How we use them with pivotal. Do you agree and how do we go forward? Yes, I totally agree. Even though the languages are too many, too, <clears throat> too many in quotes now, but I don't think that anybody or any people can achieve greatness, whether in technology or in business or any other form, without their, their language. So majority of the first world countries these, these days, majority of them, if not all of them, they use their own language. Japan, they use their own language, Japanese. The Chinese people, they use their own language. The English people, they use their own language. But it's only in Africa that we get to use a foreign language. And you know, that is part of the issues that is affecting us in Africa. So if you want to, so what I'll just do, I'll say is, although it's not possible to be to use all of the languages to develop Africa, we know that there are some that are already you know making waves. Mm. So it is from them we could just pick, for instance, in Nigeria, we could pick maybe some languages that will be that will be um, national, spoken all throughout the country then based on regions as well that could be some so what our advice is so for instance if yoruba has been made a national language mm. then in yoruba land which is under dialect that is made the the national language happens to be the oyo or ibadan dialect in yoruba country now that is in the region of the yoruba that same dialect should not be used as national they should pick another dialect mm which is not as prestigious, so to say now, as the one that they're using at the national level. In that way, they'll be developing other dialects. So then from there, we'll get to know that, okay, people, so for instance, um, my brother just talked about his own dialect of ego. He can understand yeah. the general, the children can understand the general one. And that's the case that happens in almost all the parts of Nigeria. We can understand the general dialect. So mm -hmm. instead of that, let's bring up our children in our own dialect. So from there, I think this development will go through on and on. So that, but then they pick a particular dialect. For instance, when they pick Igbo now as the dialect for the as, as the major or as, as the national language, and maybe an application is developed in that language, these children that I was talking about the other time, they will still be able to understand whatever they have to say, and they still have an added advantage of understanding their own modern dialect. Mm. So okay. I think it's Paul, it, Paul it's, Liam. It, has been joining, his internet has been going on and off. Hello, Paul. Hello, uh, good afternoon. We're about to round up, uh, but okay. what, you have been very active in the culture space, the art and culture space. And there have been discourses around languages in literature translation what is your view about how language in terms of hello sir i didn't get the last part of the question of place because of the network issues what is your view about how languages can power the future of africa Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I'm joining this conversation a bit late. It sort of escaped me. I was engrossed uh, with other matters, so, uh, but I'm happy to be here at last. Uh, 
uh, in my opinion, I think that um, language is central to uh, people's understanding of themselves and their future. Um, I was discussing with a friend, I think sometime last week, where uh, I was them that oh, where we are, the um, part of the encounter today as I can. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can yes. You? yes. Hello, can anyone hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, now it's well. Well, for all those who have joined us today, we are glad you joined, and we are. Uh, it's it's three o'clock already. Six minutes after, Paul. You've been having quite a challenge. On YouTube, Martin Oguji has also been saying hello from Lagos State. Martin Oguji, yes, from Lake, from he's in Lagos. So if you are one of those who have joined this conversation, please send us a message on the uh, 090-44-800-200. And we're going to send you your recharge card to your preferred line as one of those who won an opportunity for speaking their language and for doing a lot to promote the African language. So we will really stop at this point. And I really want to appreciate everyone on behalf of Aquea TV, the African Union for declaring this uh, week in uh, respect of the African languages. Please, if you uh, can subscribe to our channel on YouTube, we'll be very glad if you can also share the conversation. And I do know that we're going to have this conversation again in, in February. Sometime in February, we're still going to have a conversation about the African languages. Uh, don't forget, don't forget 090-44-800-200. Um, That's the number. Just send us the message on WhatsApp. Francis, um, Francis, uh, I told him, uh, uh, I missed that name. I give you them. I give you them. OK. Yeah. yeah. And Wale Ogunyale, uh, Sunday, Nambi Ezema, Paul Liam, everyone, please keep speaking your language at every given point. It does not mean we should exclude others. It only means that when we speak the languages, the languages stay alive. It's like exercising them. The language is the only thing that when we use them, they stay alive. We use them, they are not like natural resources that are limited and we expect them to finish when we use them. The more we use languages, the more they stay alive. Thank you very much from Aquea TV. Let me say goodbye. And Thank you. God bless. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wale. Thank you. I've seen all of that. Thank you. Bye, Joe. Thank you.